First of all, the first thing to realize is, believe it or not, that Arizona has an earthquake history. Uh, there have been three magnitude six to six and a half earthquakes within the last 100 years, and a number of fives as well. This is one of the many sites we have in the state for monitoring earthquake, earthquake movement. We have an older northern Arizona network, and then we have uh, new stations, uh, state-of-the-art stations, which we acquired from the nationally funded geoscope program. Uh, these were stations that were in Arizona. They move across the country and when they left we were able to capture about eight of these stations which completes our coverage of the state of Arizona. While we're here we'll show you a little bit about what's in the site and what, what a seismic site is. So the first, the first compartment is just the insulated layer here. Keeps uh, keeps the airflow from traveling too much throughout the throughout the chamber of the vault. You have an insulation ring. Try try to seal that up as much as possible. What we have here in the the top compartment of the vault, uh, there there are two main parts. There's the DC panel, which is basically in charge of allocating power throughout the various components of the system and the Q330. The, the main piece of hardware on the DC panel is the charge controller and that takes takes the incoming charge from the solar panel and imparts it to the battery. Um, and its, it's main function basically is to, to prevent the battery from overcharging or in the event of, of low solar gain discharging back to the panel. The power requirements for that vault are actually quite low. Generally speaking, you can get by with a 12 volt battery and a and single solar panel. The digitizer, we use Q330s. That's the main brain of the operation inside this vault. It does a lot of, it performs a lot of functions for us. It takes the information about ground displacement from the sensor um, and it stores it in a, in a media. It stores it for us in two different ways. It stores it locally on what's called the baler here and then it telemeters that data back to our lab where we can look at it in real time. It also has a port here to connect a GPS antenna. The GPS will tell you um, lo location but more importantly it will impart to the waveforms a, an accurate timestamp so that we know exactly when what ground movement is happening at this location. So what you're looking at down here is the sensor chamber. On the top is the foam cap of the sand tube inside of which is a bag of sand around the sensor. A lot of things go into picking the location of a seismic site. The site we've chosen here at Snowflake is a pretty good site for balancing all of those competing needs. It has good access. We have good signal strength for our telemetry good solar and it's really quite quiet so it's a good site for us. We have a lot of faults in northern Arizona most of them are not active but one of the larger ones is actually very close to Flagstaff it's the Anderson Mesa or Lake Mary fault if in the worst case scenario that fault slipped along its entire length it could produce a magnitude 7 earthquake which would be a real hazard for the city of Flagstaff. So better understanding before the event of what we might expect is very important to us. And our Arizona Integrated Seismic Network is, is the one tool that we now have that will help us uh, get the information we need to uh, plan for public safety and reduce hazards.